Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this lecture on social network and social capital. I'm Emanuela Rondi, assistant professor at the Faculty of Economics and Management at the University of Bolton, and research member of the Center for Family Business Management at UNIBZ. Today, we are discussing uh, the topic of social networks and social capital. But what are networks and what is capital in terms of social capital? So uh, we are first dealing with the structure of network and then with the resources that are available through our connection, the relationships. When we talk about social network, uh, we uh, usually might think about Facebook, LinkedIn, this virtual uh, social media, but also about our friends' connection, professional connection, personal connection, and also our family. Our family is a social network. A social network is defined as a social structure made of actors, which are general individuals or organizations, that are tied by one or more specific types of interdependency, such as values, visions, ideas, financial exchange, friendship, kinship, dislike, conflict or trade. So uh, it's important to consider that not only positive relationships are considered as part of our network, but even conflict, people with, with whom we are in conflict or organizations uh, that are in competition with us are part of our network. And uh, social network analysis is uh, uh, precisely the research that uh, allows us to analyze the network and it's a collection of techniques, tools, methods to map and measure relationships among actors. When we talk about relationship, we have to first uh, introduce uh, some uh, constructs, some concepts that are important to build our uh, understanding of social network and social capital. So the smallest unit, the smallest unit of a network uh, is an actor. An actor that uh, is represented by this ball, where there is the letter A. And A is uh, an, either an individual or a group or even an organization or firm. When two different actors are connected by a social relationship, the line that you see between the ball A and ball B, that means that there is a tie between A and B. This type of tie can be based on kinship, so A and B can be siblings or a can be uh, the father or the mother of B, but there might be uh, an affective relationship, so either lower trust or even a hate. Interactions, so A might help give B, might give advice to B or lend him money. Affiliation, so maybe A and B are both students at UNIBZ or they work at the same company. So uh, with my colleagues at, uh, as researchers at UNIPZ, I, uh, I am affiliated together with them by our um, institution. And then there is a, a role-based relationship. For example, uh, I can be the teacher of my students uh, or my boss, uh, and so these are role-based relationships. When we map, a social network into balls and uh, ties, so between actors and ties, between balls and lines that connect those, uh, those balls. This uh, is uh, a sociogram, so which, uh, which uh, represents uh, a social network. This is composed by nodes, so the entity or actor that are tied, and by ties, so this connection. And the social graphs is defined also as a graph, so the box that you see is a graph of a social network that is defined as sociograms. There are different examples of sociograms and of social network, and they might be more or less complex. So uh, you might have uh, the sociograms that are based on bold lines, for example, to represent those, tie, those ties that are uh, more intense, or uh, very complex maps uh, and even uh, a representation, for example, of uh, uh, communication. So you can map the communication uh, like uh, tracing the emails that are uh, sent from one individual to another, from one actor to another, so it's also considering organization, and mapping, tracking the um, flux of the flow of these uh, uh, emails allows you to understand which are the flows among these uh, social network within this social network. In uh, the um, network, you can also map in terms of bold or uh, thinner connection how a tie is strong, so the strength of a tie. 
what is the strength of a tie? So it represents the amount of time, of time that the two actors are connected, spent together. So if I consider the strength of the tie that I'm pointing now on the screen, this uh, means that uh, A and B might spend a lot of time together. The emotional intensity, so how emotional they are involved in this relationship. The level of intimacy, so how uh, the, the mutual competing that there is um, between the, these two uh, actors, and also the reciprocal services. So we can uh, understand uh, the strength of the tie. For example, A and B are connected by a weak tie, A and C are connected by a strong tie, and between B and C there is no tie. It's important to uh, consider that uh, strong ties are very important, but uh, we should not underestimate the strength of weak ties. And uh, uh, for example, if we consider how many people we are tied by strong ties, for example, within our family, but if we move beyond our um, strong connection, uh, we might have uh, multiple weak ties. And these weak ties are sources of information that uh, might be more uh, novel, or uh, more uh, unconventional to our topics. So this is, this is uh, a source of uh, uh, resources that is very important for our social, in our social network. And also we have to consider that uh, even the absence of a tie, so uh, when the, between B and C there is not a tie, this is strategically important for the social network, in particular for the social network, for example, of A. So the fact that A is connected to B and C, but between B and C there is not connection, represents a structural hole. And people that are positioned in a structural hole, so that are the connection between two otherwise disconnected actors, have a, a very strategic role in the flow of information that moves from B to C through A or also in collecting the information from B and the information from C and use them for a, a specific instrumental reason. So far, we have looked at social networks from a static perspective, but uh, we have to consider that networks can change over time and they might uh, exhibit different kinds of behaviors. For example, they might, fall, they might evolve, so they become bigger, smaller, they might grow, they might transform, they even decay. What does decay mean? It means that uh, if I have a connection with someone, but then uh, uh, I don't get in touch uh, with uh, this other actor for a long time, or uh, uh, I start forgetting about him, this uh, is called decay because our relationship is not active as before. And maybe if I need something from this person, I need to put some effort in order to reconnect with this uh, uh, tie. And some tie may even terminate. Uh, for example, for a uh, sad reason as that, but also if you break up uh, with uh, your partner, that might mean a termination of the relationship. So, so far we have looked at uh, social network as uh, a map. Here we have the tube map of uh, uh, London, but uh, according to a tube map, uh, we, the, the tube is relevant not only because we can uh, have a structure of connection, but also because uh, on this uh, uh, network, uh, that we can consider like uh, uh, pumps, there are also something that can flow within this pump and that can move from one position to the other, from one node to the other, therefore from one actor to another. And this is a social capital. Social capital refers to the resources, knowledge and information that accrue to an actor as a result of its network of social relationships, either direct or indirect. So if I'm connected to an actor who is connected to someone else, I might benefit from this uh, indirect connection from uh, uh, the, based on the information that I can gather or I can access to the resources. The resources means that they can be financial resources, but also tangible and intangible, other tangible and intangible resources. For example, if I need a car and I don't have a car, I can ask someone to uh, lend me a car. And this is such a capital that I can use by leveraging the, the uh, connection that they have, so my um, ties. The same uh, holds for uh, emotions, for example, and also for other types of intangible, info, intangible resources as uh, uh, information and knowledge. In relation to uh, the type of social capital that uh, uh, can be developed, we distinguish between bonding and bridging social capital. Bonding social capital is internal, so it's a social connection between people who are similar to each other in terms of status, in terms of 
race, so sorry, class, gender, age, whatever can be a variable that can uh, consider it uh, shared among actors in a, in a specific group. Within uh, bonding social capital, we see that uh, the level of trust increases as well as the level of cohesion and closure. Usually, um, people that uh, belong to the same uh, group in bonding social capital share norms, uh, values and goals. Think, for example, within a family or within an organization and increase the sharing of redundant information because you keep talking and sharing information with the same people. So it's very likely that after a while, you know a lot that also other people know. So um, this uh, bonding social capital within organization, for example, fosters uh, employee retention. So um, it decreases the level of turnover and it also increases efficiency because people are, are better able to communicate. They uh, use a specific language that is shared. So this is a matter of increased efficiency. On the other side, we have bridging social capital. Social capital uh, in terms of connection that bridge different status. So between uh, people that belong to different generations, for example, or uh, between uh, different uh, genders, social class. And usually these uh, bridging ties are uh, um, based on civic norms. So not that much uh, about shared norms that they cultivate within their group, but they are more shared uh, as uh, common norms. The uh, presence of bridging social capital also increases the, the sharing of heterogeneous information. So for example, um, within your family, you might talk about a lot about the same uh, discussion, but when you bridge with uh, someone that uh, is uh, from an outer circle, you might get information that were not that available within your inner circle. And this allows to gain valuable employees because, uh, for example, if you hire someone from the outer circle, you might get uh, in touch with other organizations that are not part of your social network as an organization and also might enhance your reputation because if you can show that you are connected with uh, people that are not uh, exactly part of your uh, bonding circle but uh, um, are higher in the status, that might enhance the reputation. And also in terms of uh, um, organizations that share the same level of reputation, the fact that they are connected with more organization that is already a matter of increasing the reputation because they show that they are better connected to other uh, actors. In terms of connection that the actors, we saw before that uh, a, a structural hole exists when there is a, a connection between B and A and a connection between C and A, but there is not a connection between B and C. This type of uh, structure is called brokerage and uh, um, there might be also an, an indirect level of brokerage. So all these blue dots that are connected with our actor B and are not connected to our actor C are, flow, are sources of information and social capital for actor B that can be uh, available indirectly to actor A. And uh, the same is for all the connections that are um, of all the connection that A is able to span in the structural holes that he uh, is at the center. So this position between uh, um, the indirect ties that are not connected uh, directly on their own is called a position of the broker. And this is a strategic position that allow uh, this actor to either um, control the, the flow of information from one side of the social network to the other, or even collect and gather information that are useful for himself. Um, this strategic position of broker can either lead to uh, keep the others separate, what is called tertius gaudens, because it keeps the others separated and is doing, um, he's uh, able to exploit the information he can access without sharing them with the other or also tertius unigens. This, uh, this means that uh, in the position of A, when A knows B and C, he decides to uh, introduce B to C and therefore create actually this connection. And uh, this is uh, very important when you consider the uh, relevance, for example, of hubs in terms of organizational hubs, uh, as uh, we, have, we are part of the Noted Park, uh, and there it's considered as a broker of different connections among different institutions, for example, that they have their own partners they are connected with, but can also be a hub of connection, of different connections. And the same holds for the university, for example. 
So I hope that you appreciate these uh, uh, lectures on social network and social capital. This is something that is very useful in our daily life, either professional or personal life, and it's also a very important implication in how we uh, interact with others. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope to see you soon.